All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to day one of our annual Fibonacci and Elliott Wave Synergy Trader event. So uh, we have three days planned for you today, um, which is Tuesday, September 10th, and then tomorrow and Thursday as well. So we've got a great lineup, a ton of great education in store for you. So um, this event is brought to you by uh, tradeoutloud.com and timingresearch.com and fxtradersedge.com. Um, and uh, of course, this event is for educational purposes only. Trading is not suitable for all people. And please consult a financial advisor and only trade with money you can afford to lose. All of these sessions are being recorded individually and will be available on timingresearch.com as well as the Timing Research YouTube and podcast uh, feeds. So today to start out the event is Adrian Manns of TraderInsight.com. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Adrian. All right, thank you. So it's early here. Um, we are in Malibu, California, so we're on the West Coast. I see a lot of you guys are, are all over the world. That's cool, that's so cool. Um, Interesting, because I know trading, uh, trading in other locations can be can be challenging. I know when we're traveling, we like to uh, we like to trade from Europe, for example. I've got a lot of family in in uh, Germany and uh, and Austria and such, but uh, it's something different, right? When you're trading at three thirty in the afternoon versus uh, six thirty in the morning, so it's uh, it's all good though, and. Um, you know, there's a little different for me today in terms of uh, in terms of what I'm presenting. I use Fibonacci stuff a little bit differently um, than probably the majority of, of technical traders do. So, what I'm looking at is is a confluence of indications, and I use it to you know give me an idea of whether or not a particular setup that I'm looking at is is uh, going to be strong if it's valid, if it's, you know, something that I want to be involved with. So let me show you what, um, what I'm talking about here, what we're doing. That's Julie and me. Um, so we've been trading since 1996, 1997, I guess, uh, was when we started and we have been at this ever since. So we were in graduate school and, uh, our background is, uh, we both have doctorates in psychology, organizational psychology, social psychology, not uh, not therapy. We're all about crunching numbers, right, and data. And while we were in grad school, we had the opportunity to work with the New York Stock Exchange quite a bit with some firms on the New York Stock Exchange that we were able to uh, get data from. And we built these models. And the models that we use to trade from today are by and large the same models that um, that we developed back then. And what's cool about it is that the resilience of this stuff has you know, made it possible to not feel like you're just firing off trades all day. And you know, part of part of what we do is we we teach people to trade. So we've got a big uh, boot camp thing that we do every year, and and um, you know we do a lot of uh, training and working with our guys online. I'm online with the guys right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, we did uh, we did some fib stuff this morning to get some some projections on some opening gaps. I'm not going to talk about the opening gaps this time because that's uh, that's what I did last time that I was here. I think we talked gaps for for quite a while you can you can pull that presentation up and take a look at it it's one of the things we do is trade the open trade earnings gaps uh this morning if you just want to dig around on your charts the two that um the two that were sort of the big the big movers for us were boot barn b-o-o-t and oracle o-r-c-l so those guys um if you go and you draw a fib expansion uh, and a retracement on it you'll see pretty much exactly um you know where our entries and targets were on those boot barn we were in one uh, one fifty six ninety three and just look real quick here one fifty three uh, twenty five got us out and then on Oracle that one was an exit at uh, one 
so about 157.05 um, on an entry up at 158.77. So that's a totally different trade, but those are two that you can pull up from this morning if, if you want to go and do a little bit of uh, a little bit of homework, a little bit of digging around. But um, you know, today what I'm going to talk about is something different. It's this uh, the scalping that we do. This um, it's not really high frequency trading, but it is something that's very very active. I've written about it quite a bit. I've done um, done some stuff in a bunch of magazines that you folks are probably familiar with, right? We're we're uh, we're doctorates, so we publish and we like to we like to share sort of what we're what we're thinking and what we're doing. And we've done lots and lots of uh, journal articles, and I wrote all these books on trading. And really what this boils down to is this all goes back to that book in the top left corner there, Around the Horn. Um, I wrote that in 2001, and everything that we did at that time, there's uh, nine strategies in that book that uh, form the basis of what we do. It's, it's all about market cyclicality. Right, markets tend to move. Price tends to move uh, predictably, moves in cycles, and um, that book is about capturing those cycles. And we trade intraday, so we are day traders. We trade full time, and um, you know our the the key I think to our success over the years has been that you know we really divide up. Um, we segment our day the same way that that book would be segmented, right? I, I go through and we're looking, we're looking at different times of day. And we're looking at, you know, what can be expected at a particular point in uh, the trading day, and then you know how can you go through and and, uh, and and profit from the different opportunities that are in front of you. So, I've got this picture. We've got a we've got a, um, a boot camp coming up in late January, and. Um, the reason I've got these pictures here is I want you to take a look at all these folks and know that, you know, every single person who's at that table, every single person who's in one of those pictures is a trader. And the way that they came to trading was different and unique for each of them. And what everybody brings with them is their baggage and their personality. And, you know, as I'm looking around the table, there's a couple of lawyers sitting there, there's, um, guy who's a rancher, a guy who owned a chemical company, guy who's kind of off the grid, lives on a boat. Um, but they're very different and they have different personas and they have different things that affect whether or not they're going to be successful at any one given um, facet of trading, right? So different things are going to be in different people's comfort zones. They're going to be in, in, um, in, in anxiety provoking situations for some people they're going to be adrenaline uh, rushes for some people some people are very very pra uh, pragmatic about trading some people are very practical about trading it's this is all about who you are and sort of how you can make things fit but again right we've got everybody who we do this thing in miami beach because uh, california is brutal when you're trying to bring people to uh, uh to a seminar first thing in the morning um, so we go down to Miami Beach and we have a good time with everybody. And what we do is we just really focus on the workflow. So we try to get everybody into a rhythm of saying there's different things that you're going to do at different times of the day. And, you know, in the pre-market, we're already setting up for the day. And so I'm using some, I'm going to show you the FIB stuff that I use with, uh, with the pre-market data, with the... Uh, with the intraday data sort of as the day rolls out, what is it that we're going to be doing? But just know that in order for us to be successful over, over the years, the way that we've done this is to take a certain group of the trades that we set up and pre-program them. So those would be the, um, I call them XRVs and the around the horn uh, New York Stock Exchange trades. So I differentiate between NYSE and NASDAQ in my trading, right? So they're different animals. They always have been, always will be. Um, I've got an Apple opening trade that I set up for, uh, you know, before, before the market. So like this morning, if you were in the room, if you're one of our guys and you just popped over here, then uh, you know that first thing in the morning, what we were looking for was uh, sort of an arbitrage trade on Apple where 
we are looking for a reversion to uh, pre-market lows after sort of a bump going into the open. Same thing on NVIDIA, looking to get in uh, right on the opening bell, capture the order flow, capture you know this, this time of day when the market makers are sort of getting neutral on their positions and just you know grab that order flow quickly as it's in front of us. And you know, this morning there was uh, Apple actually did not trigger. Nvidia did. Nvidia went about a buck and a half in our favor. So right out of the gate, we had a good trade in Nvidia. We've got the program trades set up. There's about six or seven trades on those trading plans. They're all running in the background. And this is a secret to our success: is that uh, you know we know that the best use of our hands is not to go and fiddle with um, you know, these, these program trades that we had set up. We're gonna let those run. Those just run out over the course of the day. They're in a trading plan. They're a fully developed trading plan. We know where the entry is, the stop, the target. Everything's totally automated. We know the kind of results that those put up over time. You know, we know exactly what to expect from them. So there is no point in us uh, you know, going in and, and trying to tinker over the course of the day with those trades. Because what I want to do during the trading session is be more active with things like the Magnificent Seven. So I focus a lot on the Mag Seven stocks. Uh, in particular, I, I do a lot of uh, Meta, I do Microsoft, I do uh, Tesla, NVIDIA, and I'm going to show you how it is that I go through and box those trades up every day. Um, you know, so that we can we can make the most out of the opportunities when they get in front of us. Right at the five minute mark we do an opening gap trade. And if you go back and look at the recordings from the last go around, you'll see that that uh, I call the Baltimore chop. That's a, a two standard deviation opening gap. You get a 95% uh, confidence interval around the mean. You've got a 95% probability that you're gonna get a mean reversion on that one. It's a, st a statistical model that goes through and handicaps the market. And it gets us in front of those opportunities from about the five minute mark of trading up until, well, just about right now, right? So about uh, 7 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern time is where we stop looking at those gaps because then you get a, a distribution shift. And after the first hour is over with, this is where we get into these volatility bands. And trading the volatility bands has been very, very good to us over time. And I'm gonna get in and show you how I put these trades together. And what it is that uh, you know we're looking to do as as the day rolls out. So I'm just sort of going to build these charts piece by piece and uh, show you what it is that I'm interested in looking at. This is some of the stuff that we do at uh, at the boot camp. You know, we trade these live with the guys. So if if you're somebody who's I know there's a couple of people who are here who are uh, actually registered for the boot camp in uh, in January and. Um, you know, you got a lot of work to do between now and then. Um, it's a big 700 page manual and, and 30, 30 or 40 hours of online learning. And then when we're live in Miami for the four days, uh, you know, we'll be trading these things live together. And in addition to all the other trades that we're doing, one of the things that we do is go through and set up things like NVIDIA and say, all right, what is the opportunity? So when you're looking at a chart, so this is real tech, by the way, uh, is the trading software that I use. And I have, I, I've got no vested interest in, in what anybody uses. I've been using real tech since, um, 1997, right? So old dog. And, uh, you know, I just, I stick with what works for me. What you're looking at here is, um, so this would be the, the chart from, uh, the sixth, of September. And, you know, I go through and I try to figure out by, by looking at the chart, looking at where the uh, floor trader pivots are. You guys know what floor trader pivots are, right? These are going to be your best indication of central tendency. So when you have, uh, you know, this red line up in this box, that is the central pivot. And then the blue line is first resistance, green line is first support, this black line is second support. And you know, once you get down through, some people plot uh, all the way out to R3, 
and S3. Um, but you know, I can tell you if if you get down into uh, first support or if you get up, or I'm sorry, into second support, if you get up into second resistance, you've got about a 77% chance that uh, you're, you're, you've gone just about as far as you're going to go. So unless you have a day where things, you know, really uh, move out or, you know, get away from a trend, you've gone where you're going. Out on the right side of the chart, you can see here this, um, this volume by price sort of looking stuff here is actually a, uh, a hierarchical cluster analysis of volume by price. So what that's doing is giving me an indication of where it is that I can expect some ease of motion. So if, if price gets uh, to a certain threshold level, what's the most likely thing that's going to happen? You're going to have less resistance between, uh, you know, in these pockets. So this is going to be an easier area to get through than something like this, you know, where you've got important volume, something important happened pursuant to that volume being put in. And now you're looking at this and you're just trying to figure out just based on the simplest of things, what is it that I expect price is gonna do? Okay, and then we start adding, we start layering onto what we're doing here. Let me close this. So bare bones chart. Now we go through and start evaluating where's the support and resistance, how's the support and resistance relate to uh, those volume by price thresholds that we see out on the right side of the chart. How does the support and resistance relate to those pivot lines that, uh, that are on the chart? And you can see it's, it's doing a nice job of constraining price over the course of the session. So when I set these up for trading on any given day, I'll set up a full trading plan the night before where I, I go through and I analyze exactly what it is that uh, you know NVIDIA did uh, on this particular day. And then if it's back in this range again uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna expect the ease of motion to be right there where the order flow was today. In this case, as you start to layer on um, analysis, or as you start to layer on what you think you see, the important thing is to start looking for where do things overlap? Where's the confluence? So if I'm looking at this chart, right, the first thing that draws my eye in as I look at it is the relationship between these bands and this volume that's inside these bands. Okay. So what I'm trying to see is where I identified an area of volatility, an area of order flow, is it easy there to see that the support and resistance that I identified lines up nicely with the, the volume by price data, is there, is there an expectancy that I'm going to have that, you know, the price is going to, is going to inflect as it gets into these areas. And then if it does inflect, right, where am I expecting it to go? So now we've got two layers of um, analysis that we've, that we've put on this chart. And then we move out to the next day. So that's my, you know, my trading plan is put together based on what happened on the 6th is giving me the direction of what am I going to do on September the 9th. So you can see as price gets down through that threshold level that what we get is a move that goes and gives us roughly the same magnitude as we had the prior session. Okay, so always looking for these kinds of uh, entries to happen on shallow bars. So right around the opening bell, this is not a time that, uh, you know, that I'm gonna go and hop into the first, the first threshold level. I wanna see these, these bars get tighter, sort of down around the, uh, that entry line. 
I want to see that the, the range of the bars gets to be smaller. And as the, as this range gets smaller then you know, really what we're looking for is sort of this, uh, it makes people crazy when I say it, but this inverted check mark, right? Where we, you know, you, you sort of get a pop up above and then a move back down through. And when I've got that in place right now, I've got, uh, my opportunity for profit from 105.24 and the target that I'm looking for is 104.29 in this case. So two layers of analysis and I've got a bunch of things that are that are set up. Here's today's uh, on the September 9th, the floor trader pivot. I know what I'm looking for. I know why I'm looking for it. I know exactly where I think price is going to go. So now, right, we add another layer of analysis that I'm using over the course of the day. So on the ninth, I'm gonna be very conscious those orange lines are volume weighted average price. So that's an anchored VWAP. So the, the, this orange line here, this first one overlaps with this 105.24 level and it represents the move from these highs at about uh, 106.48, uh, whoops, I'm ahead of myself here down to uh, this low down below the pivot line. So that's an anchored VWAP. So that's you know where did most of what happened in here, right? And this big sweeping move, where was most of the volume? It was anchored right up around that support and resistance line that we established the day before. On the way back up again, same thing. So now you go and, and you say between this low at 103.69, and you know the high up around uh, you know 106 and a quarter, I guess that is. Where did most of the volume happen? So again, right? I've, I've got this thing sort of boxed up now. I know what to expect. I know what I'm looking at um, uh, over the course of the session. And then where I add fib levels is to give myself another layer of confidence. Uh, uh, I want to see confluence again and uh, of these indications. You can see here that uh, you know 105.15 is the 50% retracement of that first move, right? Or the move from 106.57 down to uh, 103.72. You've got a 3.82 at 104.81. You've got a, a 50 at 105.15, and you've got a 6.18 at 105.48. And those are the fib levels that I use, uh, you know, when I'm setting up these trades when I'm going through and trying to figure out, you know, where are the likely inflections? We're just in the business of predicting inflections. Where do I think the most uh, powerful spot is going to be? Where do I think that, you know, let's say I'm getting long off of uh, the, the violation of the floor trader pivot. I'm getting long 103.97. Where do I think price is going? I'm going to say it's going to 105.15. It's a 50% retracement. It's overlapping with my support and resistance. And it also overlaps with that anchored VWAP. And you can see there's a bunch of, uh, a bunch of overhead volume there. That overhead volume tells me there's probably gonna be resistance. Price keeps going. I'm out, right? Boo, I didn't get every penny that I could possibly get out of the trade, but I don't really care. My, my primary concern is I wanna be able to set these trades up. I wanna be able to plan the trade. And then, you know, I want this thing to go off sort of on its own, because again, you know, I don't like to, I don't like to sit here and, you know, actively gun, um, you know, gun for these stops or gun for these, these entries and exits. I've got, uh, I've got guys who, who love doing it. I've got uh, a fellow I'll, I'll show you in a second here who, who really, I'm going to say had no business um, trading ever whatsoever. And, you know, he's, he's much more of a gambler than he is a trader. And, you know, we managed to get him profitable just by, by the same kind of philosophy, just saying, okay, John, you have to get your hands off the keyboard. You have to stop. You can't fire off. If there's five bars on the chart, you cannot have 50 trades because, you know, you're, you're getting eaten alive in commissions and doing nothing but complaining about it. And, you know, it, it's, it's the psychology of taking little wins feels good and taking losses feels bad. So, you know, he would just always get in there and hammer away at these things. And rather than take the um, 103.97 move up to 105.15, 
he's out at 104.29. He's back in at 103.97, back out again at 104.29. You know, and it's 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 this never letting a trade develop that hurts a lot of people when they when they try to do this kind of thing. Now let me just take a look at the chat here and see what we are looking at here. Let's see those questions. Okay, what are the horizontal and the dotted lines? So the, the solid line, these here are fib lines, right? So these are the fib retracements. The dashed lines are my support and resistance lines. So I'm going through every day and I'm taking the whole batch of them, right? So in this case, here's Microsoft. And what I'm, what I'm trying to do is I want to get in here and I want to look at the order flow. Right. Trading is all about order flow and order flow is just about figuring out, um, you know, where where did price inflect and when price inflected at a certain threshold, a certain level, what did price do afterwards? Did it go up? Did it go down? Right. Did it sell into a into a pocket? Is there a uh, uh, is there air on the on the right side of the chart here in the uh, in these volume by price bars? But effectively. What I'm doing is I'm just looking at here's here's the floor trader pivots, right? Red line, green line, blue line, black line. Um, those are those are just the calculated pivot lines. Every piece of software on earth does that for you. The, the central pivot is just the high plus the low plus the close on the daily bar uh, yesterday divided by three. So that gives you the fulcrum. That's the the central, the place that you're expecting that price is going to oscillate today is based on you know, that value line that was established from yesterday's trading. So those are these lines. So the, the solid lines there, the colored lines are floor trader pivots. These lines that you're asking about, the dashed lines. So if, if you look at this chart, what should jump out at you is that you want to be able to draw these lines pretty quickly. You know, I, I, I tell people that the, at the boot camp, uh, because there's always somebody who's over analyzing. I've got, I've got one guy who, um, you know, we love him to death. He's been with us for, for 10 years now, I think. Um, but, you know, he'll, he'll sit there and futz around with these lines to get them exactly to the penny. You know, oh, gee, you know I want to capture exactly where the highs are, exactly where the lows are. And what I'm trying to get folks to do is just look at this stuff and say, you know, about in here is, is where I'm expecting price to oscillate. So when I look at a range and I'm drawing these, um, you know, I'm drawing these lines, what I'm really looking for is uh, when it gets up to here from below, what's it do? It comes back down again, right? And it does it pretty consistently over the over that period of time so to me that coupled with this bracket of volume by price over here that says that's a significant level to look at that's a place that we're expecting things to happen over the course of the day um if you guys watch the um if you ever watch the broadcast that i do you can um that's free you can sign up for that that's um available at uh, at trader insight so if you go to traderinsight.com, there's a pop-up there that lets you uh, lets you register for the daily videos that come out. So they're live, they're real-time, they're live stream. But you know, if, if you're already seeing those, if you're watching them, then you know that what I'm looking for is generally speaking, these types of ranges. And I'm looking for them at about 11 o'clock Eastern time is really where I start putting this stuff together because in here, that's great, right? I mean, it's fantastic. If you can, you know, if you can catch this big waterfall move first thing in the morning, that's great. That's more of a momentum trade, though. And you know, when when I'm talking to you folks or when I'm doing the 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 on-air stuff, the thing that I'm looking for is far less exciting. It's this. So it's a move from 401.53 up to 40230. And it, once I see that this starts happening, what I'm doing is I'm just going in there and this, you know, this would be a, a, a bi-directional trade. I'd be looking 402.30 down to 401.53, back up again. If, if it violates this black pivot line, 
then the next place that I'm looking is for this move up into this box. So when I'm talking about these trades during the day, when I do the analysis, when I'm telling you guys, you know, these are the levels that I'm looking at, then, you know, when I say it's in the box, I'm talking about that's the box. And that box is always going to correspond to these uh, histograms here, right? And, you know, sort of this bigger picture uh, bell-shaped curve that, that, uh, that you can see on the right axis there. That's telling me a bunch of what I need to know to trade the market profitably. So I'm looking for these blue dashed lines to line up with this volume by price and to capture the back and forth of the order flow that's happening inside that box. And you know, one of the things that I can tell you that's uh, particularly useful is don't look at the volume by price until you've drawn your lines. Go put the lines together. You want you want these things to sort of self-confirm. You want you want the the information that you're looking at to go and tell you that you're right. You don't want to go and cherry pick the, the you know these threshold levels. You don't want to over uh, you know it's it's like when when you're uh, doing a uh, a study in trade station or, or in meta stock and, you know, people curve fit the data and, Oh my God, you know, it's it, it, the thing trades perfectly. It's doing exactly what, uh, exactly what you expect it to do. Look at the model. It's fantastic. And, you know, by the way, it only works on, you know, Thursday morning, if the sun's shining and, uh, um, you know, the, the, the rooster's crowing or whatever, and, and you, you've gone and overfit the data, you, you've curved fit the data and made it not as valuable anymore. What you want is sort of general levels that you can look at and say, I, I see what's going on here. So if you add to this, once again, your next trading day, you can see it's playing out exactly the way that we expect it to play out based on those thresholds that we identified. So now you've gone through and you've set up a plan for the early part of uh, September the 9th here. And you've got these, these lines that are bracketing up what your expectancy is. So if we get down into any of these, these threshold levels, we've got it on a trading plan. I didn't put a copy of the plan in this in the, in the uh, presentation today, but you know, you've got everything lined up ahead of time. So effectively, you're drawing these lines the day before for tomorrow morning, and then you're going to redraw them a little bit later in the day as you start to figure out what the dynamic is. You know, how is the the, the market at Microsoft shifting uh, today versus uh, versus yesterday? Now, in this case, you can see it stayed pretty much in those bands throughout the session and gives us really, really high confidence in the predictions that we're making. Again, I'm going to go and layer in the, the pieces of data that make it easier for me to say I'm confident. I'm going to have the courage of my convictions and the reason I've got the, the, uh, you know, the ability to go and pull the trigger on these trades is I've got lots of things that are lining up telling me I'm most likely on the right side of the order flow. So here you've got your anchored VWAPs. Again, the orange lines. So... Um, the, the person who was asking about the, the different lines on the screen, right? Those orange lines, again, those are in this extension down here. In this move from 408.63 down to 402.30, this is where most of the volume happened. Go out here and look at your, your histogram and you see the same thing. You can see that, you know, the price is, is a lot of, very active trading is going on right at that threshold. Whereas as you get down into the into the range, you don't have these, you don't have these giant, these are these are skewed by how important they are relative to what happened next. So you get a big bar like this. This tells you there was a lot of um, a lot of volume that happened right there, a lot of trading that happened right there, a lot of order flow that happened right there. And now you know you've got a fib study on here as well. And what this one is doing, whoops, is telling me if I get down and, you know, I've got this box down here at 402.30, where do I expect price to move to? 
And then where do I expect price to inflect and make another move? So we don't know that this is going to be the low when we put it in. It's we draw the FIB study after these lows are, are in place. And now as price is moving back up again, right? If my bias on Microsoft here is that I, I want to be short, I've got a, a short side uh, view of, of the market for this day. And, and I want to have uh, uh, a good sh short sale opportunity. Where am I going to look? It's up around where these different things have clustered. So we've got that 405.30, we've got 405.46 is a FIB level. We've got this anchored VWAP that's also right around here. So what this tells me is if I get up and I inflect at this, at this uh, FIB level and at this support and resistance level and at this anchored VWAP level and at this big volume by price cluster tells me I've got a good opportunity here for a short sale. And over the course of the session, right again, if you if you watch this thing that I do every day, then you see we're in the box. And then when we get down into here, right again, we're in a box. And those levels, as we go through and isolate them over the course of the session, those are the things that give us then the ability to profit from uh, you know these these scalp trades. I mean, when we started trading, this was a very different animal. So when we were uh, when Julie and I were first uh, trading for a living, I mean, you, you would sit there and and trade the opens pretty much was was the the place you wanted to be, and you were trading the high flyers on the on the Nasdaq, and you know all you were doing was chasing the momentum. Now. We're not chasing momentum anymore. We're just waiting for the order flow to come to us. There was a, uh, an interesting article that a guy did about me um, about 10 or 15 years ago, and it was called Hunters versus Trappers. And, uh, you know, Adrian is a trapper. I am definitely a trapper. I'm not looking to go and stalk these things. I'm looking to, to have them come to me. And when they come to me and the setup is perfect, that's when, uh, you know, I want to take the trade. Let me see if there's another question. So on the on the right side is um, this is volume by price. Yeah, it's it's an order flow measure. So this is um, this is a, a hierarchical cluster analysis of volume. So it's a little different than like volume profile would be, or um, or your typical volume by price. A regular volume by price um, analysis is just showing you, okay, at this level, you know, so and so many shares went off. At that level, so and so many shares went off. Um, and what I'm doing here in in real tick is, you know, these these will fill in over the course of the session, and then they uh, they vanish again when they're less important than a different uh, a different volume cluster that that's forming somewhere else so it gives you it gives you just a feel for where the order flow is going to be if you don't have if you don't have the ability to uh, uh, to plot these kind of things let me just type in here what real tick is the name and it's actually now it's um it's as so real tick was bought by um Realtek was bought by Ez, and then Ez was bought by SCNC. So they've been around for a long time, and they've changed hands a bunch. And the reason there's so much cool stuff in in this particular software platform is it's an institutional platform, right? So it's not um, it, it's not full of a lot of the bells and whistles that you see in sort of retail software, but it's full of some very very useful stuff that was added to it when Goldman owned it and when uh, you know, Lehman owned it back in the day and, and uh, Barclays at one point owned the, the platform. So it's, it's got lots of things that are, that are geared more towards institutions, but yeah, let's, let's do one more and, and just give um, everybody a feel for what the lines are. I see the lines are still given um, a little bit of confusion, but here is meta. So again, what you're going to do is on, you know, today you're going to set up a plan for tomorrow. So in this case, on Friday, you were setting up for Monday. And the first order of business is to go through and say, 
where do I see the support and resistance over the course of the session? Where is the trade in the box? So to my eye, this is a good threshold level. And then this is a level that I'm gonna focus on. And this is a level that I'll focus on and here and here. Okay, and the rest of it is, the rest of it is travel um, for, for price. The rest of it is a place that I expect the price if it gets into um, you know, the, the range below 506.62 tomorrow in this case, then I'm expecting that, you know, it's probably going to make it down, uh, you know, probably pick up a couple bucks in that range. You know, I don't expect that it's necessarily going to do this whole thing, but, you know, it might settle out in this part, right? Where all this, where all this volume is captured. So those are going to be the areas then that we're going to look at the next day for the opportunity to, to get in front of, uh, you know, get in front of a, a profit. So these are just, you're drawing what you're seeing as support and resistance. Then you're going out here and you're confirming with the order flow metric. What you're trying to see is do the levels that I have identified as support and resistance make sense in terms of, you know, big pockets of order flow. And yeah, you know, they sure do, right? So when you when you come out and you look at that next layer of analysis, okay, I, I see that my support resistance seems to be on the money. So what am I going to do next? Now I'm going to go and I'm into the next day of trading and lo and behold, right? It When it's the part of those bands that we established the prior session, when it gets to them, what's it do? It inflects. It does exactly what we expected it to do. And when it gets into this big pocket down here, right, manage to manage to go and, and travel the whole thing. It's four bucks, a four dollar move on Microsoft. This is the other thing. Um, you know, sometimes I, you know, people get antsy about, oh, it's a five hundred dollar stock. And let me just say, just trade a hundred shares. You don't have to, you don't have to trade a thousand shares, everything. You have to trade, you can trade any, any size that makes sense in terms of the profitability that you're looking at and the risk, right? You never want to trade with more risk than, than you're comfortable with, because if you do, I mean, you're gonna have to push the boundaries at some point, but if you trade with more risk than, than you're comfortable with, I'll take the mystery out of it for you. You're, you're going to have some problems. It's going to be, it's going to be very difficult for you to stay disciplined because when, when it's, it's uncomfortable to do something, most of the time what we do is second guess ourselves or do something wrong. But the lines that we drew, just by going through and doing the simple analysis, those lines told us where the opportunity was going to be, in this case on Monday morning, in you know, a stock based on what it did on Friday. And you can see that the order flow lines up. And if you looked at the, the Friday chart and you looked at the volume by price data and you look at the way that all this stuff fits together, then what you really see is, man, you know, it's, it's not easy, but it's, it's definitely doable to go through and just handicap where you think price is likely going, right? Where, where's the most likely place that price is going to inflect? Now you take the big swing move from 510.98 and down to 502.51, and you say, where did the majority of the volume in there happen? Oh, look at that, right around that 506.62 support level is where we can anchor a VWAP. And then on the way back up again, we've got another opportunity to, to pop an anchored VWAP on there, and that establishes for us another line, right? So now we've got these two orange lines that we're looking at. And then over the course of the day, most likely when we're trading the, this, what we're going to do is I'm going to say, you know what, probably right in here, based on what happened here, and based on this big volume by price node out here, that, that's a place that I'm expecting that, that price is going to catch an inflection. So that would be like another support and resistance level then that you know we're drawing 
as the day goes on. So we do these live. I mean, the, the boot camp guys and us, you know, we, we trade together. They're in, in, we've got a Zoom room that we run all day, every day. And we're just going through and we're bouncing these off each other. And we're saying, okay, there's seven of them. And, um, you know, on any given day, we're probably trading three or four. And these are the levels that seem like they're, they're making the most sense in what we're doing. Now, again, right, as the day goes on, you're adding other indications. And I don't, uh, you know, somebody, I'm sorry, I didn't answer your question. You asked about uh, uh, manipulations of time with, with FIB levels. I, I don't do that. I use a really simple, I mean, the, the Fibonacci stuff for me is about establishing targets and trying to go through and say, you know, do I have a good criteria for an entry at a, at a threshold level? So in this case, right, if you go from 511.44, that's the top of the, of the FIB study, and you go down to 502.55 uh, here, then what you see is, oh, look, I've got at, at the central pivot, I have got a 508.04, uh, fib retracement right above the right above the central pivot it's the 618 and then at 505 95 i'm back to a 382 so that gives me a, a neat way to go and say i'm going to try to time an entry from the pivot which is confluent with my support and resistance studies which is confluent with you know this volume by price data out here Central pivot, support and resistance, FIB study. That gives me just that extra level of saying I'm right. I'm confident that this is this is going to be a good trade. I'm confident that when these things line up this way, when I get two things lined up, I'm happy. When I get three things lined up, I'm really happy. When I get four things lined up, boy, if I miss the trade, I'm pissed, right? So that's the way that... Um, that I do these, let's see here. I got excited because I thought you were going to enter the name of the program and then I'm, okay. So the, the you're talking about the software program, real tick. Yeah, it's, so it's real tick and then, oh, 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 I see. I'm going to host some panelists, I'm sorry. That would be the problem. So it is. Real tick is the software, and it's also called Ez. But for those of us who've been around for a long time, it's always going to be Real Tick. Um, do you trade options in the areas that I'm talking about? So you know, my my problem trading options is, um, you know, we're we're trading volatility effectively, and as as things. As things get um, as things get to moving, the volatility becomes exp uh, expensive. So, on the options side of it, it's it's a different animal. I mean, I've I've got guys who do options. So I know Jeremy does, uh, uh, you know, scalps options contracts during the day. It's it's about the slippage. It's about um, you know the spreads. It's about how much is it going to cost you to get into. Um, into the position. Why would it follow the FIB levels for the next day based on the previous day? So you, you're looking at the order flow pockets, right? I mean, I, I think a lot of the Fibonacci stuff is um, self-fulfilling. And I think that, you know, well, I think a lot, all of this stuff is self-fulfilling. So trading is psychology. And the the gist of it is in, in my head, and this goes all the way back to when we were, you know, working. So you're, you're on, on the floor of the New York stock exchange. You got a bunch of guys running around back then. You had a bunch of guys who were working in the booths. You know, my buddy Jason is working in the Barclays booth. Um, you know, he's got one mindset. He's waiting for certain things to happen. He's going to travel. Those things that he's waiting for are going to dictate then, how Harley trades, how Donna Karen trades, how Disney trades, right? All the things that he was a specialist in are influenced by his psychology, but sort of the way that he sees the math unfold on the screens. Where is he drawing his support and resistance lines? How is he determining where he's going to enter, where he's going to create the order flow 
that's all based on something playing out because somebody's watching for it to play out. When you go and do a FIB study on a chart, it's always amazing how price will move right to those right to those FIB lines and then catch an inflection. 50% is not even a FIB is not even a FIB number, right? But we all use it. And does it have anything to do with the spiraling of, of seashells and, and the rings and trees and all that stuff and, and the universe? Maybe, but what I think it has more to do with when, when you go through and you start anticipating, uh, you know, where price is going to move is there's a lot of psychology sitting at each one of those levels. So, you know, Bernard Baruch said famously that uh, successful speculation is the art of anticipating the anticipators. And that's it, man. You're, you're just trying to get You're trying to get in front of people's psychology. You're trying to get in front of what are other people thinking? What are other people expecting is going to happen? And then as you layer these things on, right, you can give yourself a, you know, just a, a clean perspective on what's happening in the market. Why is it happening? Right. Who's, who's uh, creating the opportunity? And when we get to that level, right, when we get to that central pivot where we know there's going to be a lot of trading going on, when we get to that 50804 level where we know there's going to be, uh, you know, people who are, who are trading the, the fib retracements are, are looking to get short. When we get to that blue dashed line, we know that there's a bunch of support and resistance traders and those guys are anticipating that, that the thing's going to move lower. And that's what then facilitates the, the good trade. Um, have you done this with hourly candles, dailies? Yeah. Um, so I do lots of, um, you know, time compression stuff when, when we're trading. So, you know, for instance, if I look over here at, uh, at NVIDIA on, uh, on my trading machine, right. I've got, uh, in that case, I've got an hourly chart. I've got a a five minute chart and I've got a 30 minute chart. So we go through and, you know, we're just looking for uh, the different time compressions to uh, you know, facilitate confluence as well, right? That we want to see that, uh, you know, things make sense in terms of, of what we're doing there. I trade futures as well. Now I don't trade, so I do that a little bit differently too, right? So I trade futures from uh, the QQQs. So I look at the cues because I think the data is is smoother. It's easier for me to to figure out what's going on with the data, and you get this the volume by price uh, indication is there, right? So you've got you've got volume represented the same way that you do here on Meta. So I can look at the triple cues, interpret it the way that I interpret a stock, and then go and trade the NQ uh, to to get the leverage. So you know you can trade NQ with very little capital committed. Um, but on the triple cues, I'm watching, uh, I'm watching an intraday five. I'm watching a sixty. I'm watching a daily. I'm watching a weekly, and then I've also got um, the statistical process control. I've got the like the uh, sort of like Bollinger bands, but I'm I'm doing it on uh, volatility, and looking for you know when am I up to standard deviations uh, from from the mean. So we set the high, low, and midpoint. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's, um, I've got one that's really gonna drive you nuts. Like my criteria for a FIB study is find the pointy spots on the chart. So find whether you're looking at a, you know, chart to chart, daily, weekly, uh, intraday, you wanna see a peak and a trough and if I find those are really clearly identified, then that's that's where I'm going to draw my um, that's where I'm going to draw my study, and then I'll keep redrawing studies over the course of the day as different areas become uh, become more important. So I mean, here's you know I just did this to show you what the opportunities um, you know look like over the course of of a typical trading day, and you know I mean. You can see here, like NVIDIA came up three times on Friday. The three times that NVIDIA came up is almost $3 worth of worth of profitability. So three bucks a share. Um, you know, Thursday, it was uh, uh, 290 a share. On Wednesday, 
we traded Tesla this way, $1.64 per share. And this is just rolled into the additional stuff that, uh, that we do right over the course of the day. So this is just part of that timeline that I showed you at the beginning. How do we divide up a trading day? Well, we know exactly where we're looking for opportunities over the course of the session. And, you know, can you, can you make a living just doing this type of trading? Absolutely. I mean, this, this guy right there, I'm going to tell you, this is the fellow I told you has no business trading because he is a, uh, John does not mind being uh, guinea pigged here, but uh, you know, it took a lot for him to overcome the urge to gamble, but these are his P and L's from last week. You know, just doing these trades. So he's able to take a, a thirty thousand dollar account. He was he's a boot camp alumni and and uh, lives right around right around us here in Pacific Palisades. And it was a lot for him to overcome his psychology, because his psychology. This this goes all the way back to what we talked about at the beginning. The thing that'll sink you the fastest is if you're trying to do something that's not comfortable for you. Right. If you're trying to fight your psychology all day long, if you're trying to pound the square peg into the round hole, it's it's going to be a rough go. Um, so you can join us for a couple of weeks if you'd like to take a look and see if um, uh, you know see if this stuff makes sense. See if if you can um, you know make a go of it. We we do it like I said live in the trading room every day. So we do. Uh, there's opening gaps in the morning, and uh, there are lots and lots of these opportunities over the course of the session, as well as all the other trading plans that we do. So we've got all those trading plans that I've that I've got on that timeline. Um, if you want to if you want to give everything a shot, just go to uh, traderinsight.com forward slash trade and uh, fill that out, and we'll get you a. Uh, uh, a trial membership join us for a couple of weeks pop in there take a look see if uh, see if it's for you see if it's something that you're comfortable doing if it is then, uh, then we'd love to have you and um, you know we've we've met a lot of the guys who who have been through the boot camp we met just this way it's it's a fantastic way to see if a style of trading is is the right thing for you and you'll see a bunch of people who are actually making a living doing that kind of trading so we don't usually, we don't generally have um, people who haven't been uh, to the boot camp in our um, in our room. So this is this is a new one for us, but we're we're going to give it a shot. We're going to get everybody in there, and uh, you know, let's see, let's see if we can uh, if we can help you make some make some uh, some profitable moves. So let me just take one quick look at for questions, Philip. We believe what time frame will take. So five minutes is, is the most frequent. So I I find that a five minute chart is it if you go longer, if you go to 10 minutes or you go to 30 minutes, then it's hard to get something actionable. So, so you're right, you know, you're already in the middle of you're in the middle of a move by the time that you see um, you know, see a signal. And on a shorter time compression, I think it's it's just too easy to get suckered into um, yeah, you're taking profits off the table too quick, right? Where you're you're just um, you're you're popping in, you're popping out because on a one minute chart there's so much noise, it it tends to look like on a one or three minute chart it tends to look like uh, something is more significant than it is. So yeah, five minutes has just always been my sweet spot. All right, and I think I'm out of time. Unless anybody else has a question. Oh, good. I'm glad, Don, I'm glad you enjoyed it.